Hi everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening wherever you are. Every leader has a journey. And with the leader speak, we're trying to get to know their journey. What are the hurdles they have faced and how they are trying to overcome, especially in these tough times. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's a pleasure to welcome you all here and a very special guest, Lakshmi Hanspal. She's a global CISO at Box. And today we're going to be talking about her experience, her learnings as a CISO. Thank you so much, Lakshmi, for joining me today here. Vandana, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm so happy to be here and have a dialogue with you. Thank you so much. So, um, Lakshmi, I wanted to understand what um, a global CISO role is basically look like because every organization has a different role to say a CISO, maybe a BISO, maybe a CISO, maybe a global CISO. So what exactly it is? Um, you know, that's a wonderful question. And I... I think to answer that question, we have to look at, as you said, organization, context, the outcomes that are desired, the engagements that are expected, and the uh, pivots and the differences leaders bring to their organization, right? So when you think of a CSO, a chief security officer, or a CISO, a chief information security officer function, just like Baskin Rab Robbins with 31 flavors, you're gonna get more than 31 flavors of CISOs in the industry today, right? You'll have a range of CISOs that say, I focus on the corporate function, which is the brand of the organization, the people that uh, constitute the organization and protecting the brand, protecting the people, right? You'll have CISOs that are more compliance focused. They'll have a more GRC portfolio, governance risk compliance portfolio. And so they're coming from a, uh, if you take three lines of defense, first line being uh, ownership, second line being oversight, third line being assurance. So they would uh, function more as second line and third line of defense, right? And then you're gonna have uh, CISOs or CSOs that are product, and platform focused, right? So they're gonna say, I, this is about protecting the brand for the customers. And so product stack, product, um, uh, you know, the layer seven, uh, the application, as well as the stack in which the product is hosted, you're gonna find. Here's my definition. Here's the lens through which I operate, right? So the not star for me as a practitioner, um, a chief security officer practitioner is, how does one see through a single pane view of operating risks within the environment? So we ask that question. And if we seek that single pane view of operating risks, then the remit, then the portfolio that you would build in gaining that perspective is going to include all of the domains that I mentioned to you and perhaps some, some more as well, like privacy ops and so on. So it's important to understand what is the not star or what are not stars for CISOs in an organization, and then to build the portfolio, the services catalog, the remit, the talent, all of it around those not stars. And this is another point where um, people talk about 30, 60, 90 days plan, especially when they start off new in a uh, new as a CISO role. So, what exactly this uh, 30, 60, 90 days plan is? And is it that relevant uh, to be a CISO, to start as a CISO in any organization or maybe so, joining? Yeah, I think that 30, 60, 90 applies to any leadership role, right? So you can take a CIO, a CTO, a CDO, a CEO, um, a CISO, any of the leadership um, should have a 30, 60, 90. And, I'll, and this is important because it's, um, it's relevant. So, so for example, most of the C-suite leaders will have a board update by the time they are at most 90 days into the organization. They may have a senior leadership or a peer leadership update as well within 60 days. So it's almost uh, coming into the organizations and setting those milestones and almost working backwards towards you know, what you need to deliver. But in any leadership position, I think there are a couple of approaches that work, regardless of whether it's a CISO or any other C-suite leader position. And I call it the three L's. Any, uh, within 30, 60, 90 days, you need to listen, you need to learn, and you need to lean in. 
right? So let's just sort of unpack those three. So listening in the organization is active listening, right? So you are creating the sort of like the mind map or the graph of stakeholders and relationships that need to be built, the bridges that need to be built before any of those tough conversations come into picture. You are looking at the blast radius of scope and influence, span of control and span of influence. You're looking at the portfolio that needs to be delivered for the organization. You're looking at the services catalog. So all of these superimpose into a graph and you are making a, you know, a journey across this graph to different teams, different leaders, whether it's one-on-one -on -one or one is to many uh, team level conversations you're having, you're in active listening mode. And the questions that you're asking are mostly, mostly like, what's working well? What's not working? Where are expectations not being met? Where there is thrash and toil? What is a value, whether it's perceived or measurable, that you're getting from the team? So you're getting from the role or you need to get from the role. So these are the questions that you would ask to lead the conversation into active listening. Next comes the learn mode. So as you're listening in, as you build this graph, you're also putting in the pieces of the puzzle in the graph. So you're learning, ha. Huh, this here's the expectation here, or this is working really well, or this is not. And, and you, it's important to learn from stakeholders. It's also learn, important to learn within inward, within the team as well. What's working well for the team, what's not. So both sides. So that's the learning aspect. And learning also includes learning the business domain, the business model. How is the company making you know, profits? What are so, you know, its 18-month roadmap looks like? What are the commits made to the street or to the customers? What are we, what are analysts telling about us? So learning is multidimensional across stakeholders within the team and um, out there in the industry as well. And then leaning in, here's where lean in basically means that you are, there's some gives and there are some asks. So what are you bringing to the table? What are some expectations you're setting, right? I can think of a couple of examples, right? If you think about cybersecurity, it's not a zero sum game. There are going to be risk trade offs. So, how do we get that message to our stakeholders? Right. Uh, one example of getting that message is saying that, hey, we're not going to be talking about a numbers game if there are 200 vulnerabilities. It's not about how do we get from 200 to zero, but the conversation is going to be around top five on those 200. We just cannot fail. How do we deliver this? That, uh, those flawlessly and the remaining 195 become a risk conversation where there's acceptance, remediation, mitigation, transference, whatever that may be. So what you're essentially telling those stakeholders is that we're going to have a risk-based conversation and it's important that we all speak that common language of risk, right? Um, so it's important to lean in and set those expectations and then sort of Ask them, is that reasonable? Can we work like this for a few quarters, measure that? And once we measure, we, we'll know how to tweak the process going on, right? So listen, learn, leaning in. It's going to work in any leadership position, and CISO is not different. And most of these are delivered in a, here's what I saw, here's what I heard, right? My observations, my perspectives, 30, 60, 90 days. And I think by 90 days, the outcome should be that we have a plan for the next 180 days or more, right? It could be a one-year plan, but at least coming out of the 90 days, there's two quarters of solid outcomes, OKRs, if the, you know, if the, if the company uses OKR uh, planning in some way, we have solid OKRs to go after and deliver with, with measurable differences in risks or measurable differences in reduction of bugs, whatever that may be. Yeah, I, I totally agree on that. And especially when you are ready to deliver something to the board. So if you are allowed to, uh, to make one change in the organization when you join in, what would it be to make the life better for all in the organization? So this is like, uh, this is like playing the wish list, right? <laughs> um, and I, you know, I, I'm good. The example that I'm going to take is one that takes a lot of heavy lifting. And so 
we've tried it in some levels, but not all levels. But if there was one change I could make across the organization, it would be rotational opportunities, right? So for everyone, so there's rotational leadership opportunities within my directs, where if you have come up very strong in one sort of vertical, let's say operation side of cybersecurity, and you wanted to go into the product side or application side or GRC side, you have an ability to shift, but you bring value with that shifting as well. I think should apply to everyone in the organization. So if someone say one that has AppSec strong and ProdSec strong, and they want to say, how do I take what I have learned with shift left and SSLC and uh, the threat modeling that we do and um, the risk frameworks, um, the product uh, risk frameworks that we have built into a maybe a risk management function or maybe into I was operating at layer seven. Now I want to go into the host stack. I want to go into containers and my microservices, not just the apps that run on top of those, right? So it, it could go anywhere. They could shift down into the stack and become full stack aware, or they could shift lateral into GRC sort of functions, or they could um, they they would want to do like security engineering or automation engineering coding saying, I, you know, I, I developed these frameworks. Now I want to make it adoptable. I want to make it sticky within the stack. So that should be an opportunity for everybody within an organization thinking about rotational roles and rotational roles is about setting up success, succession in the current role before moving ahead into another role. But I think that's the way to gain um, perspective and to literally, you know, expand the zones of comfort, right? We, we start, if we do that, if we, we, we start getting very comfortable being uncomfortable and that's important. Right, totally agree with you. Can you please uh, share some piece of advice from your experience for the budding CISO or the CISOs who are, or people who are aspiring to be CISOs? Um, First of all, I would say, you said one piece of advice, maybe I'll take the liberty of two. First of all, I would say, ask the question, why? Why do you want to become that? Because in many uh, perspectives, it's seen as the only way up a corporate ladder, right? And I think that there are a number of parallel tracks for career frameworks at the professional level, managerial level, right? To think about progression, right? So I think being anything in the C-suite has a level of comfort with a number of things, including politics, making tough decisions, risk trade-offs, making decisions with all the data points not being there. There's, there's a lot of critical thinking, getting comfortable with ambiguity, but the ability to make decisions going forward, you need to get. So practicing all those skills are important, right? So first ask the question, why? That's one advice. And then it's almost like we, you know, we start doing some soul searching on when we ask the question, why do we want to get there? The second I would say is every, every leader brings their signature approach. So be bold, don't be shy. Don't go after a, a previous mold or you know, a, a framework that was used before and there's, you know, that you ha have to operate only in that sandbox. No, Feel, uh, be bold to create your own framework, uh, to, you know, to carve out your own um, approach, but bring the team along in the journey. Right, so now you're asking the team, is this right, right? Is this the right thing for us to focus? If, if it is, can we deliver flawlessly? If we can, then how, what does maturity level, in, you know, how do we set the bar, continue to set the bar higher on the maturity level? So I think it's important to bring the team along with us in this journey. So I think those two sort of, you know, pieces uh, of advice uh, work well for me. And uh, you know, this is a work in progress. In fact, every day I continue to ask myself the same questions. Uh, thank you so much for joining me today at the podcast. It's always a pleasure speaking with you. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you, Vandana, for the opportunity. Yeah, thank you so much.